Hi and welcome to our first episode in our Hearts and Minds video season. Over the coming months we're going to be speaking to a number of experts, industry experts, supplier experts, people from Team Clarity as well as people outside of the travel industry to share with us their thoughts, insight and inspiration into business travel. Now today we have our Chief Executive Officer Pat McDonough with us. And Pat, I want to have a bit of a chat with you today about Hearts and Minds. So this is our new campaign. Can you just tell me a little bit about it? For me, what it's about is it's about striking the balance between traveller centricity and the requirements of the business and the procurement industry in particular. And, you know, I think there's, there's an awful lot of work to be done to bring those two requirements together. And bringing them together actually can be to mutual benefit of both communities. It's not easy, but a great travel programme would do both. Okay, so isn't this quite a bold move? It's something that we've not really seen before in the business travel industry, moving people away from that cost-centric and travel-centric, trying to bring them together. How, how did this all come about? So one of the things we discussed was you, you either see a lot of work around the traveller-centric piece uh, which I think a lot of the time is, is seen to be counter to the requirements of a business. So uh, it's easy to be traveller centric if the you know, money is no issue, yeah. for example. So yes, everybody can travel business class or first class and stay in the best hotels. But in the real world, procurement needs to strike that balance. I also see too much around the business travel community around controlling cost and enforcing policy and, and approval processes without thinking about how you're speaking to the traveller community and winning their hearts and minds in terms of them buying into a programme. If people don't buy into a programme, then you, they don't adopt a programme. If they don't adopt a programme, you can't control the programme either. So this, for me, is the first time we've, we've gelled those two things together. We're looking at both sides of the argument and trying to find out how we come up with ways to, to meet the needs of both communities and deliver truly great travel programs. Okay, so it's not just then about focusing on cost, there's an ideology behind it of if you can control and have happy customers, you can then keep the costs and keep people within travel policy. So it's that kind of customer and control, a happy traveller is an in-policy traveller, would you agree? Yeah, but also asking procurement managers to go beyond what's in plain sight. So okay. in plain sight is, for example, transaction fees. Um, the average cost of a hotel, you know, the, uh, and the year-on-year -year comparisons. Um, but actually what we're saying to them is, what impact does a poor travel programme have upon your employee well-being, engagement, potential churn of staff, ability to recruit great staff, um, and also for people to be productive on the road as well. Yeah. These are hard things to pin down. But the challenge is being set, you know, we're saying actually, what else do you need to consider within your program? Who do you need to engage with within your business to understand their requirements of a travel program? And the great travel programs will engage with all stakeholders yeah. and strike that balance rather than just focusing on the simple things that we can all see. Okay, so we're talking about more of a holistic travel program then taking it outside of the realms of procurement, looking at other stakeholders like you just said. But what's the impetus for this? Why, why now? Okay, so I think there's more and more of a focus on, on travel centricity because of what people expect in their day-to-day -day lives, in their, normal, um, in their normal leisure lives, for example. And for that reason, we need to make sure that uh, a, a travel programme um, the delivery of travel management is in step with what people would experience in their personal lives. It's not a generational thing because all generations are getting used to the on-demand world, if you like, and I think ignoring that happening would be a mistake for us. The other thing there is there are macroeconomic factors at play and more and more businesses are looking at new and innovative ways to retain their talent and their workforce. We're at a time of almost full employment. So that presents challenges to the employer and actually losing people because you're trying to save a few quid on, on a business trip actually may be a false economy. That's really interesting. I think definitely that mix of 
leisure and business and the expectations from people. Um, like you say, because people can do this in their personal lives, you can book a train, it's easy, I can book my own holiday then they might take that attitude over into business travel. It's quite interesting that that is a, a key catalyst at the moment. So how are, how are Clarity kind of tackling these things and enabling travellers to have that mix? So one of the, the ways we do that is investment in technology and Clarity consistently over the years have invested heavily in, in technology. So that's booking tool technology, leading on to mobile functionality, but also on trip management, itinerary management and disruption management. And putting the traveller in control is what they expect. They expect to be able to control things from a mobile device. They expect to be notified through a mobile device and they expect to, to, to have all the kind of bells and whistles that you may get from a, you know, a, a B2C uh, leisure website or, or provider. So I guess then it's taking the best out of leisure travel, but then the best out of business travel from the duty of care, the cost perspectives, the finance, the invoicing, and almost bringing the two together to enable procurement to get what they need and the traveller as well. Would, would you agree with that? I, I would entirely. And one of the underestimated factors within this is that your business is looking after you when you're travelling on business. So that duty of care aspect. The mistake that procurement have made over the years is they talk about duty of care in quite a hard, cold way. Um, and actually, if you've got to win hearts and minds, it needs to be softer than that. It needs to be a message around loyalty, commitment to the workforce, having your back when you're on the road and you're being looked after, rather than we have to do this because our insurers say we do. And, and I think softening that message and thinking about hearts and minds is, is, is obviously going to be an important factor in delivering a, a really sound duty of care programme. Yeah, so there's definitely an education piece around this around bringing those, that softer element to procurement. Is that what we can expect to see from Clarity over the coming months, more an educational discussion around this? Exactly, education and communication as well. So, so it's, it's great, you know, understanding the reasons why you're doing something, but if you're not communicating that to the end users, then that's a major challenge. So yes, we're, we're trying to educate all different kinds of levels and give procurement managers and travel managers the tools with which they can actually go out to their traveling community and say, but these are the reasons why we're doing that. We're also speaking to experts across the industry, from outside the industry, from within Clarity, about the strategies that can be employed to better deliver that holistic travel program. So you picked up on a really good point then of communication. So how are Clarity going to communicate this message out to the procurement community? And what can we expect to see from Clarity kind of backing up all this that we've talked about today? So the main thing is our manifesto, the Hearts and Minds manifesto will, will be released soon. Uh, we also have a series of videos with industry experts, clarity experts and people outside the industry. The podcast, Absolute Clarity, the theme of the, the entire season is hearts and minds. And then we'll also have a series of blogs and our people, our team will be out there speaking at various industry events as well. Excellent. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our procurement community whilst you're here? <laughs> I, I think for me the key message is that this isn't, this isn't against, against what they're trying to do. Yeah. We're trying to enable what they're trying to do, to gain control, to capture maverick spend, to, to reduce noise within a business around a travel programme and ultimately to get buy-in uh, because a really powerful programme is one that's bought into at every single level within a business. Right, thank you very much for your time, Pat. That was really great to have you here. Over the coming months, we're going to be doing several more of these videos, focusing on a whole range of topics around the hearts and mind theme. Next month, we'll be looking at traveller and technology. We'll be joined by our product development manager, Will Murray, who'll be sharing some further insight into this. I hope to see you then.